Here's part three. Now that hopefully your hardware related issues are all solved and your disks are working, it's time to set them up within the FreeNAS software. Now setting up a RAID takes a little bit of uh, preparation work. One of the first things that we want to do is we want to go in here and we want to add our disks. Now we have two of them of course because this is going to be a RAID 1. So I think we'll start with the Samsung disk and we'll enter a description. You know, whatever, whatever you feel is appropriate here, you can call it almost anything you want. Probably want to leave the transfer mode set to automatic. Standby time is completely up to you, whether or not you want your disks to ever spin down or not. I would like mine to spin down after a while, but I want to give them the opportunity for their smart or self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology functions to have time to gather data. Samsung and Seagate both seem to report of a, a runtime of approximately 300 minutes for the offline data collection process after inactivity. So I reckon that's what I'll start with and I'll see whether or not that's effective. You also have to choose advanced power management. For most people the level 127 intermediate power usage with standby is a good bet because this gives the drive a fair balance between good performance and uh, low power use. So I'll go ahead and choose that. Acoustic level. Most modern hard drives can be programmed to arrange things such that their seeking operations can be timed so that they are quieter or that they're louder and offer better performance. For most people, maximum performance, maximum acoustic output is going to be your best bet. And of course, if your drives support it, you will want to activate smart monitoring for this device. Now the value of smart is probably somewhat debatable, but I would have to say that out of all the disk vendors out there, I'd rank them something like this in terms of honesty, most to least. I would, see that, I would say that Seagate and MacStore have the most honest smart data of any drive I've seen. I would rate Hitachi and Samsung somewhere in the middle, and I would say that Western Digital was lowest on the list, or least honest, because I have seen some Western Digital drives that were in big trouble and yet the smart data was all good, whereas drives like Seagate and Maxtor drives tend to report much more honest data. So whether you assign a lot of value to it or not, it certainly can't hurt to have smart monitoring turned on. You may need to specify some extra options, but most people don't. If you're most people, you probably don't have to. If you might want to, check the documentation as the link by the option suggests. And of course, these disks are brand new, so they're going to be unformatted. I'll just go ahead and add that disk. And then we'll click this plus down here to add another disk. You'll notice that my choices have shrunk a little bit. Here's the Seagate drive. And I'm just going to set things very similarly to what I did for the Samsung drive already. So it's pretty straightforward how to set all this stuff. And we can go ahead and apply the changes now that all the disks have been, so to speak, attached to the operating system. It'll think about it for a moment, and it's going to come up and tell us what we want to see here. This is a good outcome. The file system is presently unknown or unformatted, and the status of these two disks is online. We'll go over here to the Smart tab, and I've already set this up and enabled it. We have the enable checkbox, check interval in, sec in seconds. I believe the high, highest value you can have there is um, 1800. And the power mode. You know, if you ask a drive to tell you it's smart data and the platters are at rest, they may be spun up to meet the request. So set this option accordingly to what your drives require and as per the explanatory text that's given right there. On to the formatting. The next thing we have to do is prepare these drives for use. And to prepare drives for use, you have to format them somehow. We actually want to choose this, and we're going to choose Software RAID. So we choose one of the drives, we choose Software RAID, and we click on Format Disk. And it asks us if we really want to do that. We do. Now basically what it's going to do here is it's going to blank the disk in preparation for use as a Software RAID volume. If it went well, you'll see a report down here that says done and some other diagnostic information that tells you how much data was transferred. 
Time to do the second disc. Now notice this choice will jump back to UFS, which we don't want, so make sure to change it back to Software RAID. Now there's the formatting done. It's time for the RAID setup. So here's the RAID setup process. Once we've got the disks formatted, go up to the disks menu and a little flyout appears. You can choose software RAID. You go in here and you can choose the type that you want. Now keep in mind that the first two options, JBOD or just a bunch of disks, and RAID 0 provide absolutely no data security. If anything goes wrong with a disk on either one of these, you will lose some or all of your data. So it's not really a good idea to choose these unless you're trying to arrange your drives such that either you want to create this one massive volume of one disk right after another, or you want to take advantage of the faster reading and writing strategy that interleaving data between drives can offer. Here I want fault tolerance. So I have chosen RAID 1. I don't need anything as technically advanced as RAID 5, and I certainly don't need multi-level RAID. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go under the RAID 1 category. The Management tab is right there. And I'm going to click this plus over here to start adding a RAID volume. And since it's going to have video on it, I figure that uh, video is as good as anything. Now you can choose your read balance algorithm, and this is something that bears some thinking about. Because what you're doing with the read balance algorithm is you're trying to prevent one drive from getting a whole bunch more use than the other one. Now the round robin one is a simple first drive comes first, next drive comes next. And may work fine for a lot of things, but I tend to prefer the split request method. So that's what I'm going to set up. Now it's time to select the drives. To select multiple drives you have to hold down the control key, and it says of course or command click on the Mac, but I'm on a PC right now. So I'm going to control click to add both of these drives to an array. I also want to place this check mark down here in this box that says create and initialize RAID. What that's going to do, that's going to set up a whole new array consisting of these two hard drives. Then I'm going to click the add button and the configuration has been changed. You must apply the changes in order for them to take effect. So as you can see here, this array is initializing, so I'll go ahead and apply the changes. It'll think about it for just a moment here while it gets everything prepared and ready to go. And then it'll tell us that it is complete. Again, this is a very good sign. It means that things are going very well. So now for the final step in setting up the actual disks themselves. And that is the formatting of the array. To prepare the array for use, you have to pull down the disks menu, click on the format command, and choose a disk. Now you may have other disks in your FreeNAS system if you're using one box to do a whole bunch of different work, but in this case I only have one. Video. Two terabytes in size because RAID 1 is mirroring, so one drive is just a mirror image of the other. I'll click on that. UFS with GPT and soft updates is the recommended file system. I'll give it a volume label again. Don't have to get real fancy here video should do fine. If you have an advanced format drive, there is experimental support for it, but as best I can tell, this doesn't work too smoothly yet, and I certainly don't know what it would do if you attempted to enable it on an array consisting of drives that utilize the advanced, or 4 kilobytes per sector format, as opposed to the old 512 byte per sector format. So it may be best to leave that alone, because even my understanding of all this disk geometry stuff isn't that great. Of course, that word geometry sneaks in there, and that's a kind of math, and as it says in my YouTube channel description, it's reading and writing, but not arithmetic, because too much of it makes my head hurt. Anyway, I'll go ahead and format the disk here, and it'll ask me if I really want to do that, to which I'm going to say yes. Now, formatting the disk is actually going to take a little bit. You'll see a lot of output from this command. 
and depending on how fast your FreeNAS computer is, it may or may not take several minutes to accomplish this task. But I can scroll down on the page here and you can see all this information that it's spitting out. Most of it doesn't really matter to us. Really the biggest thing we're looking for is the all important done at the bottom. And you want to go through this listing and make sure that you don't see any notes that would indicate an error had occurred or something like that. As you can see the list just keeps getting longer. This is quite a big drive so it's going to get quite long before things are done. It's about as much fun as watching paint dry.